one thing I've understood is like we are going to build the Python package uh, for fetching visualization and transforming of the data, which will be used for by other teams uh, other than us. Yeah. And uh, the data have a geo pandas kind of format. I don't know yeah. what to do, but it's just like that. And we will process the data. That's what I've understood so far. OK. So what about just what it is you are doing? So that's great. I think the your understanding of that project or what you need to do it seems to be correct. Um, but what about the kind of the context? Jacinta, yeah? Uh, I've, I've read it and uh, I think that uh, we're supposed to analyze some soil uh, samples uh, in the sense that we, we are supposed to get the elevation of, of a piece of land so that we know how it is distributed because uh, when you're putting so that's when we we plant crops that uh, if you plant crops on one side with a different type of fertilizer on the other side, it will only if, if the, the output will only be accredited to the fertilizer, not the, the elevation or something else. Good start. There are some confusions. So who wants to clarify? Please don't. Jakinda and Nathaniel wants to extend. Because this is, you know, think of it. I always, so my strategy is that you are working on a project. The first day, you need to do something. And if you do in the first day the necessary element, which is like you are in the correct path, then a lot of things become easier. Then you will not waste your time. So make sure, you know, to just answer it. Only, the only way that also you will know or understand is that if you just say what is inside, what you understood, it could be wrong, it could be right. And only when you do that, you can receive like actually, like you know, you can, it's, it's basically approving it, right? So it's like you are, you're understanding you have to approve it. And most of the time, they may be slightly missing. For example, now Jakinda for me, a little bit missed the point that, no, we don't analyze soil. Like it could be, but actually the whole point is trying to, overlay as well data maybe but like that tiny difference one is really hard and the other one is probably not that hard right and it's also like it will change the kind of how you approach the problem so i will say in the first day make sure you will gain much and life becomes much easier if you just everybody participates you know builds like the it's like in a team is like what you understand what you don't understand even if it's the same thing repeating it so that other people kind of calibrate it helps you and i'm here most of the time to just do that more than show you like here is the code and stuff but de depending on different questions you would ask i will answer and those questions could be much more broader or much more focused so that is the opportunity you will have just to set a course such that by wednesday you will be able to deliver something without too much stress. And then by Saturday, basically, you'll be able to finish. So what is it? If you haven't read it, it's usually harder. So you should and you must always come the first tutorial after reading the tutorial, after reading the challenge. Otherwise, you basically are not gaining much. OK, definitely, it's better not because at least you will hear what other people read but you will gain a lot more if you rate the challenge. And that's always, it's not only just here at work. If you are in, a fair, in any meeting, it's like, you know, make sure that there, there are prerequisites for every meeting. And unless it's really a must that like you should be able to read like a documentation or what is shared, the email, you know, anywhere in a meeting, meetings just, just don't happen. They have agendas. And the more you know those agendas, the better you are you will gain out of it, the better you stand out. So yeah, so let's just go back then to the question. Anybody who wants to add their understanding further and what they what they see as a Deborah, yeah? Okay, good morning, guys. Good morning. 
so what I have understood from the question is there is a company called Agritech, which studies the uh, different uh, things from a farm. So to understand more about a production, the maize production, uh, they study the spatial distribution of uh, the maize. So to know which which part produces more and they also studied the water flow which is determined by the elevation of the field uh, at different points so uh, there is a public data set that provides us with that information the usgs data set so our task uh, is to create uh, an api uh, with uh, the public uh, the public api and fetch the data transform it visualize it and make it available for the other team members to use that information and uh, do the analysis or the studies better. Great. And there is one uh, last element she said, it may be just a slightly confusing because I think some of us from our team also understood exactly in that way and they were editing the file. You may have understood that, you may have coded. We don't ask you to write an API, we ask you to write a package that Maybe you can expose it through API, but that's not the request. It's actually a Python code that just basically you can um, call. It's so basically import it and it provides. So you can call it a type of API, but it's not really API in this case, it's just a package. So okay. just that, that element, make sure it is clear. And I know you may have understood that because some, somewhere it might still be the residual of that information available somewhere in the text. So, but we don't ask API, it's more like use the API to access because this, they have an API endpoint and you basically add, um, use that to access the data, but you write a package, basically, Python package that's installable that other people or other teams can use. But of course the difference is that even a Python package is more or less an API, right? So it's like, it's just not, it's just that imported instead of deployed in a, in a certain place where you can call it an endpoint. So the distinction is just that we don't require too much API information, but um, a code, a package. Desmond, you raised that. After that, I will come to you, Nathaniel. Oh, yes, I, I raised my hand. I was just about to explain what Deborah has said. I think my understanding was the same with Deborah, except for the last part that uh, she was talking of the API but I understood it from the point of writing a Python module that is going to use the API so that we access. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. So what is it that you don't understand? So let's say, what will be the main problem you think you will face? So the basic functionality or the basic idea is safe, right? Nathanael has said it, um, and uh, Deborah said it, now this one, and also Jakinda explained in much more detail about the actual content, like the fields and stuff. So what is it that you don't understand? What is it you think, you know, might be an issue for you? Uh, for me, I think the part that I have still not gotten is uh, uh, how we are going to, or how we are going to get to know uh, the quantity of produce, like, uh, this area in a farm produces this amount, but this area produces a little amount. I think that part I, I still don't understand. Again, that's a good point. We don't ask you that. We, uh, again, make sure, you see, like that's where I'm saying, we don't ask that. You are not the data scientist in this case. You are not an analyst, you are not a scientist, you are not the domain knowledge. You are, as it is said clearly, you are writing it on behalf of the data engineering thing. That means you're, you are working in the capacity of providing a tool for other things to be able to do. So it could be you next, but at least at this point, what you are requested is not to provide, you know, whatever, but it's more to be able to, a convenient package that allows people to call it, you know, to basically call in a short amount of time. You take care of the abstraction how you fix the data, you know, if it's slow to whatever, to make it fast, and to be able to just give a convenient um, matrix that once you load the data, you know, easily you can transform, interpolate, 
um, and do all those type of things. So again, we don't ask you much about modeling how the water flows, but it's more like elevation. Uh, Jakinda, not not nine. If you want to say before, you can say, and then after that, Jakinda. No, Jakinda can continue. Jakinda. Uh, what I haven't understood really that I would like to understand is uh, the essence of the input output part. Uh, what actually is expected when it comes to that getting the bounds and actually what we are supposed to get to put input and get as output. Great, I think that's a very yeah. excellent question. I'll get back to it. But I want this thing to come from other people. So if you don't ask me, what I would assume is that you actually know what is geometry, what is the this, whatever is listed there. And if I can assume that, I will not be kind. Because then, okay, if you know all that, then I would just add more expectation. And also when we mark it, it will be much more based on that. So you have to know what, you have to tell me what I should expect, right, at the end. In a sense, like, how much help should we provide? The first day is all about, like, how much is that you understand conceptually, as well as also technically. Technically means, like, okay, you know, I am, we are providing a lot more in the reference. If you have seen it, even in the last couple of hours, I have added a lot more um, references. And a lot of them really basically solve whatever we say. Like, whatever we are asking you, some of the packages there solve them. So sometimes, you know, it's these days, it's so easy to just get, you know, with the right query, you get whatever. And that's why we don't mind if you build on top of that. But you, so whatever you're going to do will not be useful if, if you don't understand and if you reproduce. But what is asked and how can you adapt a certain one? And for that, you really need to understand the problem in, in more detail. Actually, also, when I say the problem, whatever is described level one, level two, which is like the deeper, like is then that you also have to understand what is, you know, GDAL, what are points, these um, cloud points, you know. So some of the references I gave intentionally for video, some of them for self-driving cars, because self-driving cars are actually using also LIDA, you know. So, like, if you are going to do any AI in self-driving, you will use, you know, basically uh, LIDA data because you are kind of ranging. It's basically LIDA means like light intensity uh, ranging. So it's basically you are sending a light, and you need to understand that kind of way of partly like how the data is generated, and partly how the data is stored. So that's the like the format of the data basically. And then partly, it's also some technical things really require the most annoying part of LIDAR is that it is a three-dimensional data and it has much more complexity because it's a reflection of light. And just like your picture, it's like the reflection depends on different surfaces. And then the projection, so if you want to visualize it, then you need, you need to actually do some projection. The projection on Earth is a much complex thing because Earth is first, it's round, and on top of that, it is 3D, right? So you have to, so these things I would want, just even if you haven't understood, but the things that you don't understand, you have to articulate them. Exactly like what Jakinda right now asked, I will go through them, but I want to hear more. What don't you understand? Because if you say silent, that means you understand everything that's written. Where are you at the moment? And what are the elements of the project that you don't understand that you will hope you'll understand after reading? Desmond? Uh, when, when we write a, a module, is there a way that we are going to test it or we just try it and then it's like that because of course you're going to write and then we document this module, how it's used. Now yes. is there a way we, we are going to test the module that it is working? Yeah, definitely it's posed all of them at the same time. 
you document, you test, and you write the code. So usually, if you had time, and if you are experienced, the best is actually to, to design a test first. So it's called test-driven development. That means you actually will say, like, okay, I'm going to write this. So I need, you kind of come up with a test first, not with the code even. So, and that way, usually, it's a much, um, you know, so reading the software development guideline would definitely help on that. So I would say, right now, you're going to write all of them at the same time, given the time the constraint. So that means whenever you write, whenever the code is working, you will just probably, if you can, especially if it's a critical part of your code, like you write a, a simple test for it, and you write also documentation for it. It's like right inside the code. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to randomly ask. So half tone, what is, if, do you understand by the problem, the description of the problem? Do you have previous experience in these areas? If not, what is it something that you don't understand? It could be like, you know, one element that, that you really didn't understand. Give us one thing. Is, is uh, yeah, I, uh, go on, huh? uh, I haven't finished it. I'm reading uh, it uh, still. Okay, great. Same. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, the only thing I've gotten so far is basically we have later point cloud, which we are going to somehow manipulate into data that the other team is going to use. And I think there's some manipulation that we're going to do with the data, visualization, transforming it, and also making it into a pattern that's more easily understood because the data is complicated. That's what, what do you think? So, uh, are you new to this area? Uh, is dealing with the LIDAR data, yes. Or also in general, satellite data. Yeah, yeah, never okay. done. So, so, from your understanding so far, is that does that make sense? Like, can you digest what is written? or if there are some technical things that is written that is not obvious for you? I haven't looked through okay. the okay. links provided to look at the data, so I can't really say. Okay. Etani? Danny, can you can you talk? What is one thing that you don't understand? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, Daniel. No. Oh, okay, but but I didn't not finish reading the document. I joined the letter. Yeah, it, it is okay. It, whatever amount you manage to um, to go through. Okay. What is it? Something that that you you know it would help you. Now, if I say, if I explain, that will help you to understand better. That's what I'm asking. Okay. I don't expect, you know, you, you read it all or, or understand it, but what it was whatever you understood so far, what is something that if I tell you, that will help you? Okay, first of all, I'm, not, I'm new to leader, leader data. Uh, I don't know what uh, uh, the details of a leader data, and also, uh, use USGS. I don't know what it means, but in the document I, have, I saw USGS three department, something like this. I don't know, and uh, I'm just trying to read the document and to figure it out. Great, thanks. I mean that's that's simple. Very good. USGS is just uh, an association. It's uh, 
scientific union of scientists in the US, yeah. which most of the time does a lot of this monitoring as well as also getting data from satellites related stuff. So they are, and then this data is on behalf of them what is released to the public. And LIDAR is a laser, a satellite will just fire a laser and will measure different, basically the distribution of different things, like that means their light intensity. So just like a camera, how, how does a camera work? Camera works by basically a light is reflected. The camera doesn't actually put light, but if it has a flash, it's actually, if you take a picture at night, what it does is the camera releases light, flashlight, and that flashlight reflects on you. And the intensity of light is then recorded in the camera, right? As just a uh, count of basically electrons um, in that sense. But in a satellite, it's very similar, but a laser is ranged and it tries to measure everything in reflections. The reflections are different from different surfaces. So that's what makes leader very complex because then it, it takes into account whether it's a ground, whether it's a tree, whether it's a something, whether it's a stone, you know, blah, blah, human made and stuff. And, and it does it at different height. So that's one of the, the part. So uh, Rachi, you raised also your hand. Uh, yeah, I, I raised my hand. Uh, I just wanted to know about uh, <clears throat> On how we can load the data from from USCG, or from or, or public data set on Amazon. Yep, that's exactly the, the the heart of the project is that you should be able to learn how to get like. So it's written in many of the places. You basically there is a, a like in one of the reference where the data is located, and you're gonna be able to basically using requests. Uh, package or anything that just gets the data, fetches the data based on some boundary. But there are also some packages that facilitate that you can learn from them as well. So, but that's the, the exact point. The first point that you should you should do you should solve is ability to get to even even to get data. You don't even just the data. You don't just ask because the data is huge. You can, you should you you will ask. Through your code, let's say a request, you will put, you will specify which part of the data you want. So you need to basically give a, a filter. So in that filter, normally you would filter if it's a text, you would say like, okay, give me, if it's Twitter, what do you do? You say, give me all of the tweets that have a, inside them or a, you know, in a text called Rwanda. So then you will get all, you know, kind of you will stream all the tweets that mention Rwanda, right? But in this case, it's not like that. It's a geographical thing. So how do you request a geographical thing? You will define a geometry. And that geometry is based on IP points, or that means like the GPS coordinates. That's called what is a boundary, okay? And you will specify the boundaries. That is, that boundary is a polygon. The more points it has, the more accurate it gets. The fewer it is, it's like a polygon. You know, if you have, if you define three points, then it's, it will be triangle. If you define four points, it could be rectangle or some kind of polygon. So you can define any number of coordinates whose inside will be returned to you. So that's what is called a geometry. So you have to know, or you have to be able to do that uh, and request. Okay. Okay. So that's what you will need to read, you will need to understand. Kate? Hello? Hello? Yeah, um, I also have no prior knowledge to are dealing with just spatial data or satellite imagery, all of that. So I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around the project. Um, so from what you've explained to Rachel, is that what it means to interact with a public API? Exactly. The whole fetching of data. Exactly. It is to define geometries, to send geometries, receive the files, you know, and then kind of the files are kind of in a last format. What is the last format? You know, if it was, if it was like CSV, you know, <clears throat> 
if that means it has columns and it has rows. But last is a very different type of data format than we're dealing with. So you have to know what the last format is. How do you read the last format? You know, all that. That's what interaction means. So, so by now, hopefully, you are understanding much better. Even if you didn't read, because some people read it are asking, you are understanding a lot better than even you would read the document. And that is the advantage of having this kind of conversation. You would basically be able to, somebody who knows it can help you demystify some of the things and you focus on exactly the point. Okay, so what else? I can I can go through again just the So I think it's very important you understand what is the business need because this is what you know, like knowledge, you will not incorporate knowledge. For example, for me, I will not have to understand every detail what's written there because I have a previous knowledge I connected to. So a knowledge exponentially grows if you are able to connect it with what you know, not just what, what is written. If you are keep reading and if you don't form that mental connection, you will find it very hard to grow however you read, however you are. So which means sometimes like, okay, there is a leader, but then I'm connecting it to you like, oh, in deep learning, um, kind of the, some of the basically uh, self-driving cars are using leader because anything, and then I was connecting also to pictures. And also you can actually think of also um, VR related elements. So if you know in one of them, in one of those areas, if you are good, then you kind of can bring knowledge. And, and if you are an engineer and if you have been working on a certain thing, then you grow. Like, so always try. If it is very, it's unlikely that it will be very new. You know at least one thing that, that connects. And so by reading, for example, this one, you can really come up like, okay, if I do this project well, what would you do? Like you do a lot of stuff, right? Because suddenly it's not just only for one company you're doing, even if you now in your own country, you want to help, you know, quantify Sentinel is free uh, and Sentinel has also its own leader. Um, and, and not only that, earthquakes predictions are related to this because it's just the movement of a ground can be measured like through time, All right? So you can actually, really see how much a certain one event, one data can tie together many things from like self-driving car to quantifying, for example, um, uh, earthquakes to applying kind of like in, in an agricultural context and in, in even forest fires, you know, it's like, and many things, basically anything that, that at a large scale, if you are able to measure something or to define, uh, including, for example, how do you build or quantifying geologists or um, uh, geographists in a country have to define like what is the slope, like the road, for example, if you are working on road construction, you need to know the kind of the terrain. And that's one thing is to measure its elevation, right? So, so you need to connect it somehow in your head so that this is much more interesting than what you think. Like, but even the agricultural context that's written here is very important. So understand, and the different things that people were asking, what is this case? You don't need to know much, but it's very important just to know at least, okay, this is basically an organization um, that released, and this data was done, of course, by the US, some of the um, Landsat satellite um, organization. It's a, you know, it's a basically government funded, and it has a lot of trillions and trillions of points that it collects and now fortunately they collect. But does this point, does this data also exist for your country? You know, it's a curiosity, but check it. Or like, you know, you can ask it or you can ask each other and probably not, but are there as other leader things for my country? You can check because even if you're not gonna do it now, but you know that at least, you know, you are accumulating. And the 3D is a type of just basically the 
for this release, what they what they called. And what you are asked is really specified there. And you are a pattern aggregate, which has a mix of domain experts, data scientists. We always provide you this so that you understand what is the context that you are asking. You know, the same thing can be different in different contexts. That if you are, you know, if you are a data science or if you are the domain expert, you would not be asked this. You, you, you are probably asked exactly what Desmond earlier said. You know, how do I build? How do I make sure that my the accuracy of my water flow is important? So you may need to understand fluid dynamics in that case, for example. But in this case, you are not required. You are basically a data engineer kind of working with the data engineers or act as a data engineer. In this case, I provide a, a Python module. And so you need to know what is a good module. So in this case, what we're really asking is that what is a good module? How do you make something that's functional and relevant, right? And, and the kind of like the Python quality, the quality of the package is, of course, how, to, how easy it is to install and use, you know, how much it abstraction it exposes. That means like breaking down things in such a way that this is not only for you, but for many people to use. So kind of providing multiple methods that are kind of becomes more general usage that would be useful. And also if it's taking so much time, like, you know, do you, do you deal, do you have time to deal with like making it fast? and using less memory and stuff like that, okay? And so the mapping, it's always good. What is really what we are expecting? Because if you just look the MC3 only, in this case, you really need to understand the business context, the data engineering, which is a big one. Uh, and of course, you need to understand the format of the data and how, and, and then um, like another MC3 is basically here impact and like long learning software engineering this is a lot more what you know you need to plan and how to do so even if you just look at mc3 you will see that where where it will be like the big contribution in your portfolio or in your uh, competency so again i would recommend looking at what is requested because that is we are thinking or we spend a lot of time thinking like this because ultimately what we want is okay when we say this person is good, like for your company, we take into account how much you are talking, how much you are helping, how much you are asking, right? So, because it's like if you don't ask, however good you are, it's more likely that you will misunderstand like something and then you will redo some work. It doesn't matter how, how good you are. If you don't understand and if you miss, like if the day by the red line you get the wrong product, it just doesn't matter how good you are. It's like, it's important that somebody asks first a lot of questions, understand the message or the, the kind of the business context and the business needs and implements on time, you know, provide solution for that. That's what, what is required. And so someone who really asks uh, questions to kind of like more detail is very key. And we try to make sure like, you know, that we identify that from our perspective, you know, it's not for us, it's like, what we understand the values of companies. So make sure to, to check. And in this case, for example, we want to, we assume that after building this, you will give a presentation to the different things. And so what we are asking is that just, you know, make it a very easy presentation about LIDAR, about satellite data formats, and, um, and also like the, your code diagram and stuff such that other people can easily understand and reference your slide on top of your documentation, right? So, and then the README should have, like most of the, the references we gave you have very good, very well written README um, and maintainability of the package is also very important, but at least that it is clear both from the README and then more detail on the documentation itself and then the code, right? That's how you go on. If, if you check a new package, that's how you do. From the README, you understand something, you need more detail, you go to the, to the documentation, you need more detail to go to the code, right? So that's um, so that's what we want you to, of course, write that package, but also use that package by using Jupyter Notebook. You know, you, you use your own package and kind of show us the inputs and outputs uh, clearly, right? That's uh, part. And in the instruction, of course, just that's um, that is very clear. I think what we have been talking, but I will just focus on exactly this very key element, right? So this is. The data that you're you're, you're going to be interacting, and you are you know now what you are expected to do. It's a package, 
and what is actually the input to this whatever you know abstraction you create to connect with um, the API is that you will basically whatever field so you you have to make it easy how to specify of course you could require just a geopandas data frame and a geopandas just to, to tell you what it looks like so if I am um, so this is so for example one of the package that I I I kind of uh, linked is very very so USGS leader that uh, actually its own like the, the the official one tells you a lot of boundaries in the US so so these are the kind of like you can use them so for example this what you see is the different boundaries uh, given as as um, so I'm just gonna show you actually and um, so in this GeoJSA, so in the US JSA, there are different boundaries or different um, areas. And that area visually that you can see it here, you know, different points. Some of them are like, of course, rivers. Some of them are, you know, places. Some of them are like some natural reserves. So if you look at what is one of them, so in the GeoJSA, for example, then you will be able to see what is kind of like, what formats do it is. So if I specify like just one of them, just for example. Then if I just so um, row, like just so that. So this is the coordinate, right? So this is a polygon. It's a multi-polygon. That means it's not just only one, but it's defined as kind of like a different, um, like multiple pieces, probably. So in that coordinate, so it's a multiple polygon, and its coordinates is basically is what defines. For example, this one is one point because it's longitude and latitude. Um, and then this is another point. So until if you look at just the, the second, um, whatever, where it ends, um, where will it end? So maybe, yeah, it's very hard just to search by hand. So let's see if just there is one, which is not multiple polygon. There's an easy one. Yeah, it's like quite, quite a lot, but there might be some. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think in this one, I think there was one test polygon, for example. So this is like, for example, one, you know, one, um, the geogs and that can be actually showed as that, right? If I look at the row, it's it's kind of actually it has feature um, and properties geometry, and so what is defined in in the other one is actually just the geometry part only, right? So not like what it is and stuff. So this basically defines exactly as you could see. So if not, I I don't see the the part. You see, like if you look at it. The reason why there has so many points is that it defines so many points. Uh, it's a boundary that it defines, such that it's smoother. If it had like four points, let's say one here, two here, three and four here, it basically would be like, you know, very uh, crude. But when you want to define specifically something, usually that's why it gets like these many points. These are longitude and latitudes at each boundary points. Right, that's what's called GeoJSON. Any question before I go? As I, as I said, I will assume that you know, like you now understand, so you won't have any question. So articulating your own problem, even if it feels sometimes overwhelming, try it. So try to find like, okay, what is it something that I should have understood it that I don't understand, or what is something that I understood I need confirmation. That's how you generate questions in your head. Go on, Jakinda. Uh, according to the to the document, it says that you're supposed to input boundary polygons. So how, how what are the uh, inputs supposed to look like? So that to generate that polygon, are we supposed to do to give the coordinates as given in the 
JSON that you've shown us like this? Exactly. Yeah. That's what I am showing exactly, just that's the input. So okay. in, in this case, you can, you know, the, the point that you don't have to define, you assume it exists. And for example, you can take one of them, right? And that's where there are many polygons that, you know, many inputs that you can find um, for that. But we can, so it's basically, you can take one of them. So as it just here, what I was trying to show was exactly that, right? Uh, so the Pi 3D ape is exactly the package that, that does like you. If you look at what it is, is, you know, it, this package provides access to the 3D ape database, which is part of the National Map Service. And it does uh, requests cache and you know, moreover under the hood, this package uses requests cache for persistent caching that can improve performance significantly. The 3D web service include the following layers, does that, does that, you know. Almost this already 3D, by 3D is really a very good place to start building, right? It's like kind of takes you, and that's what I'm kind of like, just you can play with it very easily, you know. And I have all of these references listed. So the most important part is sometimes understanding and converting it in a way that, that is relevant for you. So if, if you are saying, I don't see it, so you know, the, uh, just unmute and, and say, because I, I don't see if you are raising your hand or if you want to talk. So you are, so yeah, the inputs is that. And that is when we say input boundary, you know, in this case, for example, as you could count even just by eye, or if it's example, 1 point, 2 point, 3 point, 4 point, 5 point, 6 points. Right, so this one specifies. Uh, we assume it has six longitude, latitude um, tuples, basically, um, and that is what is a boundary polygon is defined, and it's a geopandas. A geopandas looks like exactly what I showed you. That kind of um, so that kind of thing. It's basically the coordinates, right, or in the in the format that was I showed you earlier, it's kind of it could have geopandas can have many things, including type, name, you know, features and stuff like that. So type feature, type coordinate, there could be, but I think in this point it's just only uh, the features. But yeah, it's like how you define is you can you can read again. Don't trust me. What is GeoJSON? Okay, so just check check out that. So another thing is I also this pedal to, to use pedal there is also a very simple way you know how you interact with EPT. EPT is the type of entwine like the the type of format you have. So just go and check it. Okay. And how you would basically create and define some kind of JSON, which then using pedal, you can actually do a lot of stuff. Like you can read, filter you know, and all that projection, many things. Okay. And here are examples. So it's about reading them in such fast and kind of good way. And a lot of them are new concepts. So a lot of, for example, projections are uh, quite complex. So I would say if you want to understand projection, you might take weeks and months. So the most important part is how do you fast understand what is needed for the project? Because the concepts are deep. Like if you, when you go, so it's about sometimes fake it until you make it is the principle because we know that you cannot just do in one go, understand all these details. But the most important part is we are there to help you just basically move, you know, boost you. It's like confidence wise and understanding all you need is basically just sometimes, you know, the abstractions, the internal ones, because you are a junior, sometimes you might not understand that, but you get the basic idea. You get how to change fast, how to understand fast, how to learn and kind of become productive fast. That is your, like the goal. It's like, there's no way that one person will understand all we ask like in one week, right? So don't get, don't get stuck there. It's just this moving with kind of understanding really the mind of the client. In this case, who, what am I asking and what am I need to do? And how can I deal with my misunderstanding? How can I deal with my lack of knowledge and lack of experience? That is really what 
what you need to take. So a lot of them, we try to become helpful by going and getting all these um, you know, references and try to bring it available so that you just consume and kind of like become ready quickly. So we are making, we're doing kind of some kind of makeup, right? Just so, for, so that for you to look like ready for a job. And then in the job, you will have time to learn them a lot in more in detail because you still need the details, but that real learning will happen mostly in the, in the at work. Here it's like, how do you pace, you know, the, the formats and the, the, the kind of the actions, what is really the core part, the mental picture, basically the mentality is what, what we really can teach you um, here. Okay, so yeah, that's the case. And so what then is outputted? So, so basically the coordinate system, you have to uh, check. So this one, it will, it will give you, take you to a different coordinate system. As I said, this is complex. Coordinate reference system, you may think like it's simple. It is like the worst thing that you want to, you wish that you never have to deal with this. The reason is it's just detail. And there isn't one coordinate system. There are thousands and thousands of them. And the reason is because everybody wants to do it differently. How do you even define errors? You know, it's like, what is errors? It's like, is it uh, something? Where do we measure the sea level? Like, what is like, you know, how do we like, that is just like, I, I, you may take like, I don't know, a few years to really even get most of the understanding. But just choose one coordinate system, usually the standard one, you know, and there are different projections, like some are like cylindrical projections, some are tangential projections. Like, so I would say like this, for example, is one projection that you are familiar with, but you know, you know that problem area. This is like the area is like of Africa is much smaller, but if you want to make area equal, equal area projection, it's different, right? Because we're trying to project something round into flat and that has all sorts of issues. Right, so, um, and that's why there are different way of projecting it, and you have to use one of them. And the, and the names are like, as I said, thousands and thousands of names there are. Um, but yes, yeah, like the, the kind of the one that usually is called equal area projections, as well as also um, the WGS84, that is basically as gives you a reference frame of four hours which basically is what is a sea level at the sea level kind of uh, reference frame. And you know, how do you measure the sea level in Addis Ababa, in Kigali and stuff? It's very complex, but they, they managed after you know, years of something, they, they get a model of what the earth is and it's based on that everything is projected about. So that basically becomes a reference earth and on that earth is what is defined every other projection, right? And um, yeah, so it's like your nightmare, but you know, as I, I would say, co-learn together and, um, and also just time zones are divided in different sorts and those are kind of like, like for a particular, sometimes to improve for a particular time zone, there is a different basically coordinate system. And that's what's called UTM 33 for example, Ethiopia, Kenya, whatever, whatever falls under UTF, UTM 73 or something, but these are each different kind of boxes on Earth uh, that defines accurately some kind of, gives you some accurate um, uh, projection or kind of like, it's a local, locally well, high, well measured quantity. And so using that, so all of the packages of the Python course, they know like in this, when you use GDAL or when you use, you know, PDAL, all that is there while you use them is exactly to do to, to help you on that kind of projections so you can choose you know the name of the project or the coordinate system and that is what it says like even if it was just one line here that is what we do what i say now the complexity is just you have to choose but just in this case choose one and go forward that's the most important part okay and what you get is of course a python dictionary with all years of data available and a GeoPandas grid points file with elevation encoded in the request CRS. So again, of course it was the, again, the GeoPandas is the same. 
except that these are now points that are like the samples with if I look at here that is what basically features the earlier we we, um, we say it like you know the features what type of properties and that under the property for that point coordinate or for that um, coordinate point you will have some properties including elevation intensity and all that so then what is returned is this point becomes complex while this point was much more very simple it was just coordinate while this point because it has more metadata in the information it's a more complex object even if it's the same jewel pandas right and so what you expect is that per year it will return for you like the year um, 2010, some some jewel pandas, which is basically a list like that, um, and the same for different years. And you know, basically, each of the jewel pandas basically will have elevation and geometry. Um, so that geometry is not like a point; it may be just some some area. So like that area could be like in in the depends on the resolution you give it. So if it's like a kilometer so that is basically just defines the geometry of that kilometer right so for example it's a point example is like that it's a point if it's a point if it is an area it's an area so like earlier you, you say you saw like if it is a polygon point is one thing like one reference the center of that and you know that around so it's kind of you take if it's like a one kilometer that point refers about the center of the one kilometer but then you kind of draw uh, one kilometer radius or like half a kilometer radius around that and then you would basically for that point a reference frame is like what is its elevation in meter or in some other thing and, and and that's what you're gonna visualize so then like you then take a reference map it could be an uh, like a, you know, a, a google map or anything then you on top of that you overplot uh, for example here is what i was just showing this is what you will sometimes visualize like so this is again if you look at it this is a street map a map box open street map most of the time we use that right so and on top of that you visualize whatever in that slice that you chose okay and that's it so then the data transformation comes when now you want to compute um, some kind of like weightiness index that comes from if you collect the data from the soil data and then you transform and we'll give you that um, around Wednesday, like because we have to ask what they use, like the formulas. But the most important thing, even if you don't do that, is of course, as you could see here, what you get, what you what the experiment or the observation does is this. That means it just really doesn't doesn't go by like you know very uh, uniform. But what you want sometimes for processing and speed and whatever is uniformization. And how do you convert that? That's called interpolation, right? So let's imagine you want to define a, a very constant grid, and therefore you, you try to basically interpolate those points. The ones that are not available, you interpolate based on nearest neighbor um, and other points. And that's what is this part of, it's called a standardized grid um specified in in a certain meters or kilometers but in this case we we, we are asked on five meters separation so a uniform grid on uh, five grid uh, five meters separation and then if you are able of course to do all that and good that you get i think it would be like once you once you are able to do the above then all these things become simple because now you understand what a map what a you know from the points you convert them into a map and that becomes usually satellite data tiff files or you know like um, raster files they are called they're basically like images like you know just jpeg or png type but with metadata in them and with probably much more transformations you can do and so then they basically you can get them and you can overplot together uh, with them right so and then you just basically get very nice this type of, uh, so uh, where was that? It's maybe here. So, so you you get then this this kind of data. It's like you know. So for example, here, uh, this is again a map. Like of course, this is where I think this should be one. Yeah, like this kind of projection. So these are like 
what you would be able to get on top of like some uh, open street map but if you have satellite image basically you get something like that so this is for example the geo package uh, gives us some shapes and basic information about the data coming from so it's basically overlying for example on top of some sentinel data or swell data and this is much more of polygon type of data so yeah you know this is for example just on top of google earth or open street um yeah so okay so i think if i have that uh, let, let me see if there is if i just search already even um did even here there might be So in the reference of that, except buildings are from OpenStreet using Amazon SageMaker. So if we look at that, for example. So that's what is a satellite data looks like. It's some RGB it could be or maybe multiple uh, parts. And this is how on top of that your mask, like your kind of binary mask which shows like yellow for example when there's a structure and white when there's no structure that's basically a binary mask and this is the leader data that you get that just when you are visualizing it on black and white white basically being high elevation so in this case is the elevation but it could be the intensity this could be like the present the first is whatever so they say the other format okay so it doesn't have but this is the following image shows an example of data visualization in Las Vegas, but this, this is more for the intensity. As you can see, areas with white or some kind of roofs are uh, high intensity, while three kind of structures are low intensity. So, but this is intensity, but you can change the property from intensity to also, it could be elevation. That would be different. That means these ones will be bright if you chose white to be high elevation and black low elevation in that case this should be these kind of structures that are high or like that have high elevation will be uh, white and then the ones on the ground would be black so that's what properties like you would go do yeah and you can over plot with satellite image uh, like that so that's what the kind of visualization that we are asking if it's soil in this case it's roads and stuff so roads for example here so below like so roads are overplotted like that but if it is a tree or if it's like a, a farm you, you overplot with a farm right so it is yeah and then if you are able to do some soil data this is easy just to help you but if you as i said this is a bonus because we know this already understanding in whatever here is very complex so the most important part is to produce that. And once you understand that, these things become easier. Okay. So, any question? Okay. So, all my advice, hopefully, you got it. And hopefully, that. From here, you will start, you know, you will get and ask questions. And if you have, um, yeah, it's like use the opportunity. Today, don't sleep without understanding and having clarity and solving the, at least connect to the data um, and, and see what is the geopandas, how does it look like. Because tomorrow, if you do that today, tomorrow that means you have the data, you are playing. So you will be able to explore more. And so Wednesday, you are able to write. And so on then Friday, you will be able to get where you want. So plan it accordingly, what you need to do each day so that you don't get stressed and that you will keep uh, a good pace, OK? So if you don't have any questions, then we can stop there. And tomorrow, Abu Bakr will give you more detail on the using um, just codes like the GDALs and visualizations and, and, and here and there. So you'll be able to learn a bit like how do you get actually code wise on that. Yeah, Nathanael? 
So uh, we don't have any starter files or anything we can refer to? I think okay. all of the packets, all of the references are starters, more or less. You can choose where it's easier. So there's one, for example, that's called, like, if you just go to the, in the existing packages, so the Pi 3D depth is basically has, you know, starter code where you get connected and you, you get the data and you visualize. So something like that. Uh, I'm just going to find that. I think it is in one of the reference. Uh, done. So these reverse capes tools, uh, this is uh, using 3D, 3D tape. So if you look at just that, just that, that's the example, this is again, you know, this is how you would use Shapely, by 3D and stuff, how you visualize exactly what you saw. You know, even the boundary can visualize them and you need to edit that based on exactly what I told you now. But, you know, this is the, the kind of, the, the coordinate system that, that it's using and it gets some, you know, you plot use IM show and using terrain like CMAP, like for example. Like, you know, it's just, this is a good starter map, but then you can, you can look in the packages um, and, and the pipe itself has a much more. So in that one, I think this is, uh, it's not like I'm just gonna actually do that. Uh, we just put it in the just as the simple one like reference like a Pi3 reference would give you just what I showed you so that that is where you can see but Pi3 data has already a lot more you know just example it's like so if I look at this Pi3 yeah so if you look at there you know that you get quick starts here get map, get something, you know, and visualize, okay? And pi 3 dep is I referenced here, if you look at it, the search point, yeah? Does that answer your question? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, the point is because we want you so remember, this is really came from the industry itself, and we want you to do much and understand because you know we want they want to use it also. How much do you know? How much can you do? It's they know it's the most complicated project, but they wanted to see it's like how much it is. You know, one is able to achieve with a certain description. So I don't want to give too much like starter because you already pi 3 tape is exactly what we want in some way. So, but understanding that and refactoring and bringing like a simpler package that is usable is something that I would say would, would go farther, right? So as long as you acknowledge where you got it, you know, whatever, the techniques, the code that you import or something, but you, you need to build it in such a way that it's easy to use and that you understand that you can give a tutorial about it that you will be expert in it because if you write it, you, you become expert. Even if you use other people's code, you know, if it's too complex, it becomes hard. And reducing it and stuff is also a knowledge. You know, just speak. So there are many tools out there that I give as a reference, but it's your task to get read, engage, summarize, 
get a very kind of manageable, uh, understandable, and useful package when you build, and that becomes your, your product. Okay. And tomorrow, um, Abu Bakr will take you through just some startup course that he has probably in getting and accessing the data. But until then, just try. Yeah, anything else? Just we're over time, but hopefully that gives you, those who asked at least gave you a good, and those who didn't ask got something out of the people who asked, so hopefully that's good. So let's stop there, and let's continue conversations over Rocket Chats. Cheers, guys.